What age did you make your first century? I remember the first century in, in tournament was, was 10. And that's um, incredible. And then I can remember Matt Selt telling me, you, you know you don't cue the ball straight. I was like, what? Why haven't you changed chalk like everyone else? I, t I just feel like I've won all these tournaments with yeah. this chalk. <laughs> And it, it, so it couldn't, have, it couldn't have been that bad. Now, myself, I'd probably rather annoy someone else <laughs> by me using that chalk. And I'll take a kick every now and again for them to be angry about all the chalk marks on the table. So we're in a business park in Bristol. Uh, you would never expect one of the best players in the world this to be the practice facilities, but this is exactly where Judd Trump, who we've come to see today, does his daily routines. So we've come to have a chat with him, play a couple of frames. Let's go. Okay, delighted to be here uh, with Judd Trump. We're going to have a couple of frames. I'm sure I won't get many shots, but uh, really looking forward to seeing up close uh, some, well, naughty snooker. You don't use that anymore, do you, naughty snooker? No, I've saved it all for you, though. So. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, go I'm going to be picking a few balls out. And uh, Do you want to break or shall I break? Or? I'll, let, I'll let you break. I'll see what you still got. That's not bad for me. I can tell the way I hit it. That's all right. That's quite tight. That could be snooker, yeah. So how long have you been in here? This is like a purpose-built room, so. I, I played on in something like this for around 10 years when I used to play at my old place, The Grove, and right. I wanted something similar. Right. Um, just out of the way on my own, where no one, no one would know I'm here. So you, you, you prefer this, like, no atmosphere, just a workplace? Because I, I used to, when I moved from a club, this is at the end of my career, to a table at home, I missed the atmosphere of a club kind of thing. So you, you, you don't mind, you prefer that? No, I prefer it. I mean, uh, since I was around 20, it's, it's always just been either other professionals in there or, or just, just me, uh, especially the last three or four years when I've had Jack here every day as well, which right, makes okay. it a lot easier. But the, to be honest, there's, there's not really that much talking going on. It's, it's, right, quite, it's quite serious. It's quite is serious. It? Okay. Yeah. I'm there to go practice for three or four yeah. hours, whatever I need to do every single day. Okay. Um, sort of after having the success with him straight away early on, I, I now know that. If I, st if I stay doing the same thing, it can never be that far away. It's only in the head or a bit of right. confidence. So right. I've not really panicked that much over the last season or two because I'm not doing anything different. I'm not practicing any less. Right. It's just probably that 1% of confidence that I had, whereas I, I knew I couldn't miss. I knew someone was going to miss. Yeah. Um, I think the game is so fine at the top with so many good yeah. players that your 1% off is, it can be the difference between yeah. winning 5-4 in the quarterfinals then going on and winning it, or he's lost early on in the last 16 or quarterfinals. Yeah. I was going to ask you that because I thought, what's, has, has anything changed or what do you think has gone? Because obviously winning five tournaments one season, then breaking the record six tournaments the next season, and yeah. then being a serial winner to obviously, I won't say you're, you're not <laughs> down with it, but not winning as much. What, what's, nothing's changed, no? No, not, nothing has changed at all, really. Um, but. I, d I just think it's just that, that little bit of confidence I had. I just, for a season or two, I just knew that I probably couldn't miss. Do you almost took it for granted, winning? Um, I did. Oh, I mean, I look just, at that, you may sure, as well stop there, sure aren't just you? just back out <laughs> 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 um, No, I didn't take I invented it Naughty Snooker. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> I'm just following you. Um, yeah. No, but... It, it, it did come a little bit boring, I think. Um, Winning? Yeah. Wow. I think also quite a few of the events in my, in my good seasons were with no crowd. Right, okay. And I, I think at the end of it, I, I started to... It was just become a bit the same old, same old. Right. And I kind of lost the, the passion, really. So even though I've not done as well with the sort of the crowds back and everything like that, I'm starting to enjoy it again. I think the World Championship, even though I lost in the final, was the first time for a while that I've actually enjoyed playing again. Right. Oh, look, you're just going to be picking balls out here. This is just... You ridiculous. could have told me, you've been playing five hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you prefer solo? You prefer solo practice? Yeah, I, I, pr I prefer just doing the, the, the same thing that I, that I have done for the last sort of four years now. Oh, oh, no. It's a bit tight, of, eh? Flicked a bit of side on there. I thought that was in. And obviously, you've got, you got Jack, obviously, yeah. with you the whole time. It's, I mean, when I've got Jack, it's, it's like playing in a, in a tournament or anything. Is that, is that serious? Right. It's, like, I, I don't want to miss 
when he's there. there there's no lap shots, there's no yeah. smacking the balls around, there's no getting bored. If I feel like I'm getting a little bit bored, a little bit tired after five, six frames of trying to concentrate, I sit down for five minutes, but yeah. I don't play for the sake of it or anything like that. And I think that's probably the difference in why I've been so consistent. But I think it's very impressive because I mean, through the years when I've seen players practice in the amount, even when I go to the academy in Sheffield, you know, the, the, the Chinese players, I mean, yeah. they're, they're in there for hours and hours, but there could be two people playing and there's another couple like having a chat and on their phones and everything. Yeah. It's like, it's not. I, sometimes I get a bit confused about when they say how pra hard they practice and I, I kind of, I've, I've seen um, a few of the Chinese players in the academy I was playing at and they weren't particularly hard practices at all. So I think he's got that myth that Ding used to play 10 hours a day and that's kind yeah, of stuck with two hours rest. Of, yeah. serious practice kind of thing. So what age did you start? I think I was about six when I started playing snooker. Six? I mean, I, I was like yeah. 12. Like 12, almost. yeah. So I think I could just reach the table. I know um, there's been a few stories about how I used to does it stand on a box or something like that? But that, right. that was never true. I could just I had the exactly same story told about me. Yeah, so I don't know where someone's got that from. Um, but yeah, when I was younger, I can remember I used to sort of queue out sideways because I couldn't reach the table properly. And did your dad play or anything? Um, my dad used to play a, a bit, maybe sort of every Saturday. Um, was he any good? My, my dad was hopeless. My granddad was supposed to be good, but he died before dad. I was born. Oh, he had really? talent, but my dad was... He was, he was oh, no, not great. No? He can, he can hold a cue. So you, any idea where the talent came from, no? Um, no, not, not really, no. It just, I've no idea. I, I'd obviously love to go back and see what other people were seeing in me because everyone was, was saying that, obviously you've got a lot of talent yeah. in that, but you can't see it yourself, can no. you? So you don't, you don't know what they're well, you seeing. Do, you just play. You, it's, yeah, you just yeah. play. So I've always been someone that, doesn't really think about sort of cue action, anything like that. Honestly, don't don't care. Like yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't until so it must have been like 15 or 16. I remember Matt Selt told me once that I don't cue the ball straight. I didn't even know. Because you never had a coach ever. I had a very young age. Right. Okay. They never tried to change the alignment or anything like that. So right. it must have just been how I sighted the ball. They left me to it, and then yeah. I can remember Matt Selt telling me, you, you know, you don't cue the ball straight. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, you aim up over there and then you hit there. Yeah. And it was just like puzzling. But for me, I just, I don't care. Like, it's just, that is it. That's yeah. What, it's that is what it is. Well, yeah. I, I, well, I think you've been playing to, no, if someone came to change that now, I mean, it would yeah, probably I, ruin, ruin your game, yeah. wouldn't it? I mean, there was, I think there was one point about four or five years ago when I tried for maybe like a week or so, tried hitting. Right. And I think I, like, I ended up, given up after a little bit. I was missing blacks off the spots and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. And that was it, I just went. I think when you're to totally natural, I think, I mean, I, I've had many coaches have I had that I have in my career, one, two, three, maybe four coaches. Now, and, I, and I think it was to my, to my detriment rather. Yeah. Than, and the, uh, t more towards the end of my career, really, to try and find something. Yeah, I think... Because um... I used to, not obviously not to your extreme, but I would do the same thing, come bring it online at the last minute. Yeah. Um, but obviously not nothing like, because even still, when I watch you and even the maximum yeah. against Ronnie on, on the, the last champions, black the last black, I thought, yeah. oh my God, he's going to miss yeah, this he's, miss <laughs> he's even here. Yeah. But, I mean, there's, there's actually quite a few players uh, that I've, I've now noticed when I watch on TV. Mark Williams is another one. He cues miles offline and, yeah. and does, does the same kind of thing. But I think now I'm probably the most sort of renowned for it. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's been consistent for me. What age did you make your first century? Probably before 10, did you? I, can, I remember the first century in, in tournament was, was 10. And that's um, incredible. There, there was one in a, in a league, I think it was 106. And then I made one in a tournament, one, three, four, I think it was. Which, right. which is quite big. It, yeah. It's quite a big break. Um, to make a century at that age is good, but to sort of get into the 130s early on is... Uh, I was happy with that. Oh dear. No, I'm not happy with that. Though. Oh dear. Yeah, I remember um, we used to hear stories about, you know, this kid, Judd Trump, who's making centuries so young, and it's like, they're showing a bit of disrespect there, I have to say. I'm keeping it open for you. I can't be playing safe. <laughs> Safety's overrated. So do you, do you think your game's changed? I mean, why? Well, obviously your game's changed so much from when you first 
like that. Um, was it a semi-final against John Higgins? The fight was it final against John Higgins in the world? Semi-final. The final. Final. Yeah, final yeah. 2011. I mean, you basically went for everything, right? Yeah. At, at that point, I I used to hate actually playing playing safe. I think, and I'd, I'd rather lose than play safe at that point. To be honest, I, I'd oh. rather go home. I just didn't enjoy it. So. Yeah. Because when I first, I was the same when I first came, you just go for everything. That's yeah. what strikes fear in your opponents. Yeah. Because they just don't know, if they don't get to say, they say, well, he's going to go for everything. Yeah. There's, there's nothing, nothing puts you more on edge than someone taking every shot on and not playing safe. It's, it's, it's horrible. Even now for me, when the young kids do it against me now, I don't like it. Oh, look at this. Why, why am I not still playing? This is... You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> So do you, do you pra actually practice safety now or not? Yeah, um, not, not much to be honest. Um, it, it's more against if I play someone, I sort of take it, take it from that. I, I, I find practicing safety can be, I, I just don't know, a, a little bit, just a little bit useless really, because it's, it's not realistic, I don't, I don't think. Yeah. Pot, uh, you could say you could say that about potting balls as well, but I, for me, it's never really helped practicing the safety. I must admit, though, when I'm playing these qualifiers, that's what I find is the standard of safety play. I think has gone right up in yeah. the last 10, 15 years. Even playing players that I'm playing, obviously, right at the bottom. Yeah. The safety play, because I mean, when I was playing, if I got past the bolt line, that's all I was bothered about. Seriously, because the long potting wasn't as good then either. Yeah. So. I think um, there's a lot of good single ball potters now. I think the break building of some of the younger players isn't particularly amazing, but yeah. they will get in, they will create it's chances. Cool. Yeah. I think some of the practice routines though you see at venues, I see with like weird designs and reds yeah. and stuff. I think that is helping, mm. I think, some of the positional play. God, my long pot stats are going to be tremendous. Yeah, you're, you're hitting it well today. <laughs> That's very disappointing. That's very disappointing after the opening red. So do you set yourself goals now at the start of a season of how many tournaments you want or, or do you just play the, no, each tournament as it comes? Yeah, I've, I've never really been one to set any kind of targets. I just try and play and in, enjoy every bit of success I, I possibly can really. I, I, I'm someone this no, there's a few other players that seem to think they're super relaxed and they have to tell everyone every time, but I'm someone I, I feel like that is relaxed. I don't need to tell them. I just yeah. I do enjoy myself. I think you've seen me after the world. You probably thought I was a little bit too happy, maybe. But well, I yeah, just yeah. really enjoy it. Like, I just didn't enjoy it. But, but that world, you were yeah. anywhere near your best. Yeah, that's, I mean. that's what I mean. The world final. When you go that far behind, hmm. you've mentally, you know, you, you, you've accepted it yeah. already. Anything else is a bonus. Yeah. Because I actually, I have to be honest, I thought, because I, I knew, because I know how, like, obviously how good you are when you're winning those tournaments, I, I thought Williams would actually give him a better final. Yeah. Than you, because I didn't, I didn't think you were anywhere near your best. I thought you just got through that world. It was great. Compliment to you that you got through, well, your B, I don't know, B or C game. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, that's what I'm able to do a lot more, especially yeah. when I was winning all those times. I, I wasn't anywhere, when I won Turkey last year, I was... Don't say that, Sel will be watching this. Apart from the final. <laughs> the final was a bit better and I, I did have a big fluke against him as well to, to go, I think it was 5-3. The first, the, the whole time I was terrible, like right. terrible, awful. And that's not even exaggerating. I must have been at about 5% for that. The world, I, I wasn't at my best, but yeah. I, it was the first time I'd actually been happy to sort of play and I yeah. felt like I was able to compete a little bit more. I mean, have you got a number of like world titles you need to, you'd like to win before the end of your career, or, or not? Are you not? I mean, I, I from, from obviously when I was playing, I had a target with yeah, Steve yeah. Six. I had a target to go and win. Obviously, when I started, went I was unlucky. Um, but oh, good shot! Shall we set them up? Are you, do you have you set your um, any any targets at all for for like uh, or like even just triple crown events? For me, to, to win the world, it was always to, to win it. Yeah. Um, obviously, when you get to break. what I was, was 20, 29, you start to panic a little bit. Yeah. Obviously, you got it out of the way straight away. And yeah. I feel like 
if I would have won mine at 21 yes, as well, yeah, yeah. is a whole different story. But yeah. then you start to panic a little bit and you, you just want to win it once. So for me to get that first one out of the way was, was massive. Anything else now is a bonus, but I feel like I'd be disappointed if I didn't get to maybe three or four. Yeah. Um, I feel like I would have probably underachieved a little right. bit of it. Well, if you had a season where, say you could choose between winning like five tournaments again, or the world, what would you choose? Five tournaments. Would you really? Yeah. yeah. See, for me it was up. I was always yeah, the, the opposite. World. I say to myself, the, the world was the first one, and the Masters was the second one. Yeah. Because the Masters, I thought, with the top 16 in the world, you're proving yourself against other yeah. best players. But you'd just rather have more titles. The feeling of losing, I'd, I'd rather lose less often. <laughs> Right, okay. Then, then, on, then only win once for me. Oh, I can't miss a long ball. That must be about 95% <laughs> I think it's 100%. 100. <laughs> In terms of ve venues, you're talking about the world, would you, do you prefer Ali Pali or One Table Crucible? Ooh. That's, oh, oh, oh. Alexander Pali is amazing. That's there, a, right? That is a tough one. Um, yeah. I, in terms of atmosphere, I'd say Ali, Ali Pali. Yeah. I, I, I feel like, apart from the 2011 season, the, the final there, the atmosphere was absolutely incredible against, yeah. against John. Other than that, it doesn't really seem to create quite the same buzz. But th there, is, there is something that, the World Championship, you can get absolutely demoralised. Yeah. You can't get that anywhere else just no. because of the... Well, it's a whole the situation, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the situation. And I mean, he's, he's even, I think he's even worse when there's two tables, when you're next to each other. I feel like if you're playing bad and your opponent's playing well, you're watching it up so close, you're, yeah. you're like, What's, how yeah, is no. he playing like that? And I'm playing like that. Every time you come to the table, the table looks so hard. Yeah. Um, I think until you've got demoralised at the Crucible, you don't, you don't understand how hard it is to play there. So obviously, you're, you're obviously, whoa. Obviously, well publicised that you want to, you'd like to change, see changes in the tournament. Would you like, obviously, more table, more tournaments like the Ali Pali? Look at a good eye on my opposite hand. This is good, isn't it? Oh, uh, you're, re you're ready. <laughs> you're peaking for the world, isn't he? I think. <laughs> he's, he's ready for it. <laughs> but like, would you like more tournaments? Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously, Hong Kong. What did you have? Nine thousand people in Hong Kong. Yeah. You can't obviously have that in the UK. But yeah, I mean, to, to me, on it, honestly, that that was one of the most special things I've seen in, in snooker, yeah. to have that amount of people turning up. Good shot, even, even though it wasn't my game, the first, the first few games felt empty and there was about 3,000 people there. That's yeah. how ridiculous. Well, we used to play there was 3,500. Yeah, thousand yeah. so the last really time we real. went, there was about 3,500, the atmosphere was unbelievable, but this time was just a, a step up in sort of something that, you can't really prepare. You, you, like as a snooker player, I never thought I'd play in anything like that. No, so it, no. it felt like a dream to me. Um, I was I was devastated actually to lose that that first game to John, even though I played yeah, half I, decent. Well, I mean, it's made, I made wanted for to your get game, out. Yeah, it's made but for like um, even even for you now, that that's if every tournament was like that, then you'd probably actually want to come back. Do you, yeah. do you know what I mean, like there's something to to, to really aim for. But yeah. There's too many torments now that are just Same, just absolutely pointless. Yeah. I, I feel like there's just, they're on for the sake of, there's, there's, no, um, there's no drive, there's no will. It's just putting a torment in the middle of nowhere. I also feel like snooker should be in the major cities, sort of Manchester, Birmingham, yeah. Bristol, more in London, not little towns in the middle of nowhere. I know, I know, I know what you mean, but I, I know, I understand why. I think sometimes in the, in the bigger cities, their argument is sometimes that there's so much more going on in big cities. I mean, it's the way that snooker's always been, isn't it? I mean, it's like, I do think the top players could do more, I think, to create interest, because what I, what I find incredible sometimes when you go to a venue and you get in a taxi and a taxi driver says, oh, I didn't know there was a snooker tournament. Yeah, I, that's what I was I going to say, yeah. What, what, what's going on? Um, so I think, you know, or would you think of like maybe a, a top player going to say a city there's going to be a tournament a month in advance and, and doing and, and doing some an kind of or two players yeah. doing an exhibition and getting all everyone yeah i mean when i was in ireland two or three people come up to me and asked what i was doing there yeah. so 
Was that, did you play golfs? Oh no, was that in, um, in Belfast? This was Belfast. Right. Yeah, so. It's just a bit confusing. It's, it's, I mean, it's just lazy, really. Lazy. Yeah. I mean, there should be a lot more sort of publicity to promote the game. There should be maybe people on radio stations, that, that, look, that kind of thing, to, to let everyone know that what's going on in, in town, really. That's just clumsy, isn't it? I mean, if I was in commentary, I'd be like slaughtering that. That's just clumsy. I mean, I'm embarrassed to say I was playing for the blue there. <laughs> <laughs> but these tables, honestly, when I play it, these tables are so nice to play on, aren't they now? Yeah. When I get a qualifier, I'm just... I mean, yeah, I, I take it a bit for granted now, but... When you're in full flow, it, it's just... Yeah. It's so it, nice to be yeah. out there. I mean, if you're struggling, everyone. you just it, yeah. you just look silly. Yeah. Have you been on any four-week holidays lately? You can't in the season, can you? After, you do your big holiday in the yeah, summer? Yeah, yeah, in the summer. After the season, I was away for a, a little while in, in America. But... Oh, Stephen, Stephen, during, Stephen. During the season nowadays, I'm very well behaved. Yeah? Down, down to business. So it's, just, it's just basically snooker and that's it? Just, just snooker, yeah. yeah, every day, pretty much. The odd, the odd day off after a tournament started, but there's, there's not many days off during the season. So if you lose on a, say, in a final or Sunday, when are you back on the table? Tuesday, probably. Um, pretty, that's pretty good. At, at, at the latest. Pretty good. Um, that's quite impressive, actually, because uh, a lot of the players I play with has... I mean, the, wor the worst thing is when people win a tournament and like, it's basically never hear from them again. It's yeah. No, it's something that I think... Um, when, when I was winning, um, and, and even now, if, if, I, if I won a tournament or lost, if I'm super tired, which I can be sort of drained after, it can be quite draining, then I, I will give... I have to force myself to take the day off. It's, right. it's not really out of choice. It's only because I'm falling asleep early or something like that. Otherwise, I, I probably would be in here the next day. Right. Um, would you feel like if you got to the tournament, you'd feel almost guilty if you hadn't put the work in kind of thing? Oh, yeah. 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 I, ha I have to know that. Yeah. And, and that's the mindset of a winner, I, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, of course. You, you, you might not be any, for me, I might not be any better, but just to have that, I, I know I've worked hard. You've prepared, you. yeah. You've done everything and you can yeah. just to. Yeah, even when you get maybe a bit of luck, I deserve, I deserve it, I've worked harder. That, just <laughs> yeah. that kind of yeah, yeah. mindset, I, I feel like, helps. I'm interested with, why haven't you changed chalk like everyone else? Because I see you jump up when you get kicks, and I, I'm like, I feel like screaming through the commentary box, well, why don't you change chalk? Because I, I was the biggest sceptic of all. But since I went to it, and obviously I don't play a lot of snooker, but I'm never in a kick. I, t I just feel like I've won all these tournaments with yeah. this chalk <laughs> and it, it, so it couldn't, it couldn't, it couldn't have been that thing. bad. Kick's the most annoying yeah. thing in the world, I mean, right? they are annoying, but I'd rather, now myself, I'd probably rather annoy someone else <laughs> by me using that chalk. <laughs> and I'll take a kick every now and again for them to be angry about all the chalk marks on the table. <laughs> well, if you play Neil, he yeah. gets right up his nose, doesn't it, Neil? So, like, now I know that it, it really annoys everyone and... Um, oh, right, so... So part of it's not yeah, even to your benefit. Annoying, annoying people. I know <laughs> Jack Lazowski was down here the other week. I was playing him and, and I think I had a massive kick and he was like, yeah. Sung along, why do you use that? And then the next shot, he's misc done the worst miscue ever. And I, just, <laughs> I just looked at him and I thought, that's, that's why. Would he be like your best mate on tour, Jack? Because you um, obviously go on holiday with him, don't you, as well? Yeah, I mean, I think Lazowski and, and Ollie Lines are probably Ollie the, Lines, two, yeah. the two I'm closest to. Um, I'd say I'm not, I'm not really, apart from them two... Um, you're not, you're not a, a I'm, mixer? I'm not, I mean, I, I don't think it's yeah, right. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the friendliest of, of person. I wouldn't... There's nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't, go, go, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hear anyone criticise <laughs> you for that. <laughs> I wouldn't go out of my way to go and chat to... So if someone sits down, then I'll, then yeah. I'll speak to them. But I'm not someone that's going to go and start a massive chat with anyone. At the end of the day, you're there to do a job, aren't you? They're yeah. there to win a tournament. So yeah, me and my brother just kind of stay out the way a little bit. If, if someone wants to come over, like Matt Selt or someone, then I'll, I'll, yeah. I'm happy to, to, to speak to him. Matt's also 
a good friend when he wants to be. He's, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> when he's in a good mood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I, Matt's the funniest person on tour. Give well, it, well, he is, bar, bar none, bar um, none, I think. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's not really a conscious. I just don't really, I'm quite a quiet person yeah. myself, so I just, I'd probably rather hate you than like you when I'm out there. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I literally didn't speak to anyone. Yeah. But I learned that from Steve. Because, um, I, I mean, I remember, you used to remember when I first turned pro and that, and you go, you walk past Steve and you say hello to me, he wouldn't even look at you. Yeah. He wouldn't would, even acknowledge you. Yeah. And then I thought, because he was my hero, basically because I wanted to be the best player in the world like him. And you, got, you, you, you learn from what they're doing, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's only probably you, Ronnie, there's no coincidence, probably you, Ronnie and Neil are the three that but don't mix. Quite, yeah. Really, a lot of people, and you're the three most successful, generally. Neil can be very, very quiet as well, yeah. yeah. Neil's, Neil's someone that doesn't... <laughs> it's an doesn't individual sport, this, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I was reading about, like, my hero, like, obviously, Tiger. And he didn't speak to anyone. No. Yeah, friends are overrated in this business. Now, oh, here we go. Here we go. What's the, what's the most that. cushions? Have you got a shot? There's the most cushions. I might need, I might get you to demo it. The, the pink into there for the black. Oh is one, yeah, that, two, that three, four, five, five six, that's, seven. Isn't it? That's a that good one. That was about seven. Yeah, I think I think there is one one with eight. I think. I mean, like, because when did you like find out that you had this cue power that you play these shots? I mean, you play shots that no one else can play. Yeah, it's quite strange. There was there used to be um, when I was a kid and I used to play down the oh. <laughs> Down the club, there used to be a few people with sort of stupid amount of cue power. And I always kind of looked at like, wow, you can screw the ball yeah. back like that. And then, um, probably wasn't it until, oh, that's a tight I thought pocket. that was in, yeah. That was, um, probably wasn't until I turned pro really and, and, and some of the commentary was like, a, I didn't really realise I had much yeah. I mean, if you always use the same cue, it must be a strong cue, right? Um, no, this is probably my third or fourth okay. since I've turned pro. Um, right. I think a lot of the cues are kind of bend with the way I hit it. Yeah. Because you've not even got like that really pushed long down. a backswing. Yeah. I really push down on the cue as I sh strike through it. So I don't think my cues last too long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's meant to be. That's nowhere near there. Did you play that? No, I, I played to check it off of here and then there. <laughs> Yeah, good, good effort. <laughs> Sorry. I'd say you'd still fancy clearing up from there nowadays, wouldn't you? Six colours, yeah, cheers. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you put me under pressure now. <laughs> well, surely. Yeah. Make, make sure the blue. <laughs> I'll put the black at the same time. Now. Judd, pleasure to see you at close quarters. Cheers, Steve. Thanks Cheers. for that. Great, great fun. Great fun. Okay, a huge thanks to Judd Trump. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe as usual. And let me know what other players you'd like me to have a couple of frames with. Cheers, guys.